Welcome to the Colorado Department of Transportation's How to Measure Curb Ramps video. This video will show engineers, inspectors, and contractors how to consistently measure newly constructed and retrofitted curb ramps on CDOT right-of-way. This will help ensure compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act and the proposed accessibility guidelines for pedestrian facilities in the public right-of-way, or PROAG. When CDOT designs curb ramps, the design vehicle is a wheelchair. So accessibility standards focus on making sure wheelchairs can get to and through the curb ramp. However, visually impaired individuals outnumber wheelchair users by four to one in Colorado. So it's important to understand and consider their needs as well. Every curb ramp has specific location information associated with it, like a unique ID, geographic coordinates, the primary highway number, and the intersection position. Every intersection is composed of a primary state highway and the secondary crossing route. If the intersection is two state highways, primary is a lower numbered route of the two. To note the intersection position, orient yourself so you are facing the primary highway and then rotate 90 degrees so you are facing toward increasing mile points. Refer to the curb ramp designation diagram and assign each curb ramp the corresponding letter and number where A is the top right corner of the intersection and the labels continue counterclockwise. Always calibrate your level before measuring any slopes. The two most commonly used levels are Smart Tool and Stabila and you can review their calibration instructions by watching these videos. If you are using another type of digital level, be sure to follow the calibration instructions for that brand. Before measuring, use the CDOT M standards to identify which type of curb ramp you are evaluating. Knowing the curb ramp type will help you know which measurement you need to do. There are five types of curb ramps. Type 1, which has one or two flared sides and a turning space at the top of the curb ramp. Type 2, where the turning space is at the bottom and there are one or two curb ramps leading up to the pedestrian access route. Type 3, which has return curbs on both sides and the turning space at the top of the curb ramp. Type 4, which is often used on wide pedestrian access routes. And type 5, which is also commonly referred to as a blended transition and should primarily be used in high pedestrian traffic areas and shared use paths. Occasionally, there are constraints that make a fully standard, compliant curb ramp design impossible. We call these modified curb ramps and it will be up to you to take all measurements that still apply to accessibility. Many of the required accessibility measurements are taken the same way for curb ramp types 1, 2, 3, and 4. In this video, we will continue the instructions for measuring types 1 through 4 and address type 5 measurements separately. You will need to measure running slope, cross slope, and counter slope for all curb ramp types. To measure the running slope, place the level in the center of the curb ramp parallel to its direction. Remember, all slope measurements should be reported to the tenths place. To measure the cross slope, place the level in the center of the curb ramp perpendicular to the running slope. Again, record the measurement to the tenths place. When measuring counter slope, place the level at the flow line pointing toward the crown of the street and parallel to the running slope. Make sure the level is centered on the curb ramp and record the counter slope. A shorter level is recommended here so that you are able to stay within the curb and gutter area. To measure length, place the tape measure in the center of the curb ramp parallel to the running slope and record the length rounded to the nearest half inch. To measure width, place the tape measure in the center of the curb ramp perpendicular to the running slope and record the width. It's important to remember that all measurements should be rounded to the nearest half inch. To measure the cross slope of the turning space, place the level in the center of the turning space parallel to the street and perpendicular to the direction of travel. For curb ramp types 1, 2, and 3, you need to measure the running slope of the turning space. To do this, place the level in the center of the turning space parallel to the direction of travel. Turning space width is usually the same width as the curb ramp it serves, but you should verify the measurement again with the tape measure. Turning space length is measured parallel to the curb ramp's running slope.
If a curb ramp has flared wings on one or both sides, you must record the slope for each flare. When you are facing the street, the right flare corresponds to your right and the left flare to your left. Measure the slope by placing the level along the curb line at the center of the flare. Clear space is required for any curb ramp that is on the diagonal or apex of the corner, regardless of type. Measure clear space length by running your tape measure from the flow line out to the vehicle travel lane on both the left side and the right side of the clear space. Then record the shortest measurement of the two. The width of the clear space should be the same as the width of the curb ramp, but you should always confirm the width with a tape measure. Type 5 curb ramps, often called blended transitions, are measured differently than types 1 through 4. You'll need to take each set of measurements twice, once in relation to the crossing for the primary state highway and again for the crossing for the secondary route or street. First position yourself facing the primary state highway and in line with the center of the pedestrian crossing. To measure running slope, place the level over the detectable warnings and below the grade break pointing towards the sidewalk or pedestrian access route. To measure cross slope, move up to the pedestrian access route or sidewalk and place your level in the center of the sidewalk above the grade break, again keeping the alignment with the center of the pedestrian crossing. Measure width in the same spot on the pedestrian access route or sidewalk above the grade break, centered on the pedestrian crossing and perpendicular to the running slope. Take the counter slope by keeping the level's orientation in the center of the pedestrian crossing but move it down to the flow line and place it on the curb and gutter. Next, move so you're facing the secondary route or street, position yourself in line with that pedestrian crossing, and measure the running slope, counter slope, cross slope, and width the same way for the secondary route. To measure street grade, place your level on the street in the center of the pedestrian crossing or crosswalk just above the curb and gutter perpendicular to the curb ramp's running slope. To ensure wheelchairs can get to and through the curb ramp, all transition points must be flush. Be sure to check the top and the bottom of the curb ramp and all gutter, asphalt, and concrete joints. If there is a discontinuity in any of these places, the ramp is no longer compliant and brakes and joints will need to be made flush. Make sure the detectable warnings span the full width of the curb ramp and are at least two feet deep in the direction of the running slope. CDOT does allow a two inch width tolerance at the sides of detectable warnings. Detectable warnings should be aligned with the pedestrian access route and they should contrast in color to the curb ramp. This concludes our video on how to measure curb ramps. We hope this video will help Team CDOT keep our system accessible for all pedestrians in the public right of way.